Tournament sees Canada's Josh Johnson do battle with Francis Jermaine. These guys match up pretty well, with Johnson having a slight height advantage and Jemay having a slight reach advantage, so they should hopefully equal each other out. We do have the short notice of Jemay, making it a little harder for him to rise to the occasion. Johnson making his way to the ring. 3-0 with two wins inside the distance during his short glory tenure. 22 and four overall, half of those victories inside the distance. Known for his technique and his flash and his aggression and has his dad, Vincent, in his corner. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this lightweight tournament semifinal scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner, a four-time French Muay Thai champion. His professional record, 50 wins with 11 losses and four draws. 18 of those wins coming by knockout. At 5 feet 9 inches tall, 1.76 meters, he weighed in at 152 and 1 half pounds, 69.2 kilos. He fights tonight for France. Please welcome Jimmy. Here now is his opponent fighting out of the white corner, undefeated in three prior glory appearances. His professional record, 22 wins with four losses, 11 of those wins by knockout. At 5 feet 11 inches tall, 1.80 meters, he weighed in at fight time at an even 153 pounds, 69.4 kilos, fighting tonight out of Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Josh Johnson. Once again, your referee, John Axwood. John C's made frequent trips to the Netherlands, but he spent his entire camp in Den Bosch at Andy Sauer's gym. Preparing for the biggest night of his career thus far. Meanwhile, Jim A. Representing the hopes of the French people in this tournament. You know the rules. Making his glory debut. Referee's John Axwood. We are set for three three-minute rounds. The bell in round one. They touch gloves. John C. in the white gloves. Jim A. in the black. What should fans look for in this matchup, Frank? Well, for John C., he's really got to close the distance, bang the body, and get his knees going. He's really crafty. He also strikes well, moves off the line when he strikes. So he doesn't get hit much when he's striking. And then with Jermaine, he's got to start fast, I think, and get in kick range. Like, make this, make this a kicking game. Uh, and don't load up on the right hand. When he loads up on his right hand, he exposes himself a little bit. Talk about how important mental preparation is as John C. whips in an outside low kick. He, this is his third opponent in this tournament as he chops away at Jermaine. He was supposed to face another highly touted prospect in Nicholas Larson of Denmark. He is out with a foot infection. Was going to face Chris Busuku, who was deemed medically ineligible to compete after the weigh-in. And in comes Jermaine to save the day, I guess. Save the day. Good body work by Johnsey. Bang the body. Jamey started training in Muay Thai at the age of 13. Knocks Johnsey off balance. Coming up on the midpoint of the opening round. Left body kick by Jamey. He goes to work on the body. There's a left hook to the jaw by Johnsey. Yeah, and that's one of his money shots. That's why uh, Jermaine's got to keep that right hand straight and back. Oh, the punch kick combination by John C. A little of that Dutch style that he's picked up working with K1 Max Great, Andy Sauer, who was in his corner. Under a minute left in the first frame. 
Good combination put together by Jermaine. Oh, wow, nice. lightning hand speed by Johnson. So far, what we've seen in this tournament, you see the high-level technique and the incredible crispness wow. and the action that only glory can deliver. Johnson stepped in super deep for that ball oh, shot. Oh, counter right hand, though, by Jermaine backs him up. Took to the liver by Jermaine. Beautiful. Two punch, one kick, chopping combination. Jermaine checked that kick. Final seconds of a fantastic opening round between Josh Johnson of Canada and Francis Jermaine. Both of these guys went right at it, but Johnson got the better of these exchange combinations when he started chopping that leg out and also doing that downward leg kick, which just hurts so bad when it happens. Another punch kick combination. It's not just a leg kick, it's a downward leg kick, which just chops your leg. Kickboxing royalty at ringside here in Lille, France. Three-time K1 champion Remy Bonyaski and four-time K1 World Grand Prix champion Mr. Perfect Ernesto Host taking in the proceedings. They've got to be pleased with what they've seen thus far in this tournament. Or Ronaldo alongside Frank Shamrock as John C eats that body kick, misses with the head kick. Goes inside, delivers a one-two to the body. How did you score that frenetic first round as Jimmy gets dropped to the canvas? I had to give that to John C. I think that uh, effective striking and those cut kicks, those down kicks, I think they're doing damage and they look tremendous. Jimmy taking the fight on short notice is Definitely game, staying in the pocket, moving forward. Good movement by John C to uh, escape the ropes. Body kick by Jamey. Ducks underneath that right hand and just misses with that kick. A lot of kicks, a cavalcade of kicks, if you will. And look at this, 59%. John C lines, yeah, that big ones, too. Again, able to avoid that. Right hand delivers a short right uppercut, and that knee attack was caught by Jamey. Thus far, the, the combination work of Johnsy appears to be the difference. Not just the crispness, but the speed in which the techniques are delivered. He's beating him to the punch, and if he starts from the body up, he's going to hook him hard in the head. Oh, there we were spent hunting with wow. that high kick. I haven't seen that one for a while. That's a great combo. And still mixing it up, showing the maturity. Look at the way he tattoos his torso. Johnson moving forward. Right cross glances off the beard of Jamey, who moves back to the center of the ring. Coming up on the final 60 seconds of another action-packed second round. The winner of this fight will meet Thai star Sintachai in the final, the victor to challenge Robin Van Roosmullen for the glory lightweight title. Johnson with stalking head movement, he's working his way inside. Body kick by Jermaine, countered immediately by an outside low kick by Johnson. Staying in the pocket, focus leads with a knee. Very slipped, delivered the right hand. He's got just beautiful boxing, combining the boxing, the movement. And that leg of Jamea is just chopped to pieces. And you can see that despite being 22 years old, Josh Johnson, as he rocks him with that left hand, going in now. Kickboxing's been his entire life since the family moved from London, England at three to Vancouver, where his father runs a gym. 
A terrific round for the upstart cutout, Josh Johnson. Johnson really starting to mix it up. Look at this fake go low, kick high. I love that technique. My coach said to me one time about kick my ear off. And here's the right hand. It just pops. Jimmy right on the button, staggers him a little bit. And Johnson right on him, following, finishing with that kick every time. Boom. Johnson just smelling it. With that lame leg, Jim is going to have a tough time in this round. K1 Max champion, Andy Sauer. Sauer power. You're watching the Glory Lightweight Contender Tournament semifinal action, third and final round. Josh Johnson in the white gloves, Jimmy in the black. Johnson the latest. In an impressive line of oh. Canadians, he gets tagged with that right hand. We have Glory Featherweight Champion Gabriel Varga. And Joseph Valtellini, unfortunately, forced to vacate the welterweight title due to health concerns. We wish him well. And we are looking forward to August 7th when Nikki Holskin battles Raymond Daniels in a rematch to fill that vacant title. Johnson stalking him down. Oh! How do you have it after two rounds, Frank? I think John C. is controlling the fight and hacking this to made to pieces. Beautiful punch, low kick. As we look at the total strikes. 103 thrown, landing 46%. Come on. Anytime you land over 50 or over, you're usually ahead of the game. And he continues. Now they chop away at each other with kicks. And you have to be impressed with both of these athletes and what they are putting on display. Kickboxing at its best. Oh, you saw the leg collapse. <laughs> wow, that was cool. He jumped knee and then kind of floated back down with a turning leg kick. Oh, beautiful lead left hook to the liver and a nice left hook countered by Johnson. Johnson wants that leg. Minute and a half left in the fight. Oh. Has to be cognizant of Jamey's attack, however. There's a side kick wow. that pushes Jamey to the canvas. Oh, his wheels are gone. Oh, left uppercut on the inside. Jamey is damaged. Johnson now beginning to tattoo him and pepper him all over his body. Jamey strides a right hand, then goes down with the knee. And Jemay's, it's ruled a knockdown. Jamey's left leg is barely working. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Hands up. Under a minute remaining in the fight in the tournament semifinals. Two knockdowns in a round or three total. Well, now it's a final round, so two, another knockdown. The fight will be over if Johnson's able to score it. Lands a right hand. Continues to whip it. Tenderize that lead leg, as you mentioned. It's... It's damaged. It's been butchered by Johnson. Oh. See so how he's lifting it up now when he gets close? He's like, don't kick my leg, please. I think they're going to start calling him Josh the Ripper Johnson if this continues. 3-0 and with two wins inside the distance. Continues to go to work on Jamey, who's shelling up along the ropes. Oh. And again, tagged, goes down, barely stand up. One, two, three, well, four. Five, Two knockdowns, it's over. Six, seven, eight, five. Well, the referee was aware of that. It's a uh, tournament rules. Two knockdowns, you win the fight. So he's won the fight. Josh Johnson will face City Chai in the final, and he will be looking to avenge his mentor, his hero, Andy Sowers' defeat. What a final on tap in the Glory Lightweight Contender Tournament.
Beautiful leg kicks. Hey, Jermaine never got out of this fight. He was just outgunned from the beginning, and the, the culprit was that leg. It just kept getting chopped and hacked inside and out. By the end, Jermaine's movement was just not working. He just did not have the strength and stability. You know, after, after chopping up that leg, Jemay blocked it nicely, or at least started to block it. Johnson went to the other leg. A tremendous debut on the big stage, and Andy Sauer has to be very pleased with his protege's display of technique, landing two knockdowns in the final round to seal the deal. 22 years old. What were you doing at 22, Frank? 22? Um... I just started my career in martial arts. He started when he was, well, three years old. Following in the footsteps of his father, Vincent, his brother Jay's also in the corner. Showed a maturity level that was very impressive, saved his money working as a plumber after he graduated in order to save enough to, to live in the Netherlands so he could focus on his training and fight career for a year and again held his entire camp for this tournament in the Netherlands which is driving distance from Lille, France. The semifinals were any indication the final of the Glory Lightweight Contender Tournament is going to be amazing. Josh Johnson defeats Jemay via third round of TKO. Here are the strike stats. Oh, the, the strike stats say it all. Look at 71% of kicks landed, and at least half of them had to have been on that poor front leg of Jemay. Just hacking. He said such good timing on that. And when he was moving inside and hitting the body, hitting the head, and then the fake stuff like that up high, just such a level of, of technique in Johnson. It's beautiful to watch. Even a side, side rear kick. Come on. Ladies and gentlemen, this fight officially came to an end by way of the Glory Tournament 2 knockdown rule. For your winner, by TKO, who now punches his ticket to the tournament final, Josh Johnson! Josh the Ripper Johnson rips off another impressive victory here in the semifinals. And good display of sportsmanship by Jemay, who, come on, taking the fight on short notice, put up quite the effort. And Johnson now 4-0 and oh in glory with three wins coming by way of knockout as we update the brackets. And there it is, the fall. Knockout artist Zach Mwakasa representing the Democratic Republic of Congo taking on glory newcomer Carlos Brooks of the United States. And Brooks enjoying a height and reach advantage. Got to stay on the outside. I don't think this is a punching game for Brooks. I think it's a kicking game. Zach has power beyond reason in his hands. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this now scheduled for three three-minute rounds. Introducing first, fighting out of the black corner. His striking abilities have been widely showcased. His kickboxing record, nine wins with just one loss. Seven of those nine wins coming by knockout. At six feet three inches tall, 1.91 meters, he weighed in at fight time at an even 208 pounds, 94.3 kilos. Fighting out of New York City, USA, please welcome Carlos Shankenberg Brooks! His opponent fights from the white side of the ring, a former WBF heavyweight boxing champion, ranked number four in the Glory World Rankings. His record, 12 wins with two losses, 11 of 12 wins coming by way of knockout. At six feet even, 1.83 meters, he weighed in at 209 pounds, 94.9 kilos, representing the Democratic Republic of Congo. 
show, ladies and gentlemen, Zach the Black Warrior Mukasa. And your referee in charge of the glory ring, Pablo de Costa. Protection, yeah, you yeah. are, yeah. Fight. Touch. Corner. Set for three three-minute rounds of the Glory Light Heavyweight Division. The karate stylist Brooks. Fight. Fight. The boxing prowess of Zach Mukasa. Our good friend Crooklyn from Bloody Elbow refers to him as the most interesting man in combat sports. She's onto something. A guy who has survived a volcano eruption, venomous snake bites, being shot at. I mean, this guy has lived enough of a life to not only option his script, Frank, because I know you're a producer as well, but many sequels thereafter. We'll talk to him. <laughs> and now looking to author a memorable career in kickboxing, made it to the final of the light heavyweight contender tournament, but one of the Achilles heel in his repertoire remains kicks. He's trained with the late K-1 veteran Mike Bernardo, but all of his power are in his hands. Although yeah. he's working on his kicking, he, he was the victim of a head kick from Cavallari which stopped him in the tournament final. Cavallari now has designs on challenging for the Glory Light Heavyweight title, currently around the waist of Gokan Saki. Brooks is sitting down nicely on that jab and holding him at bay. This is exactly the game he needs to play, and then add the spin kicks and the inside-out kicks. Brooks, a veteran of Chuck Norris's World Combat League. Uh -oh. Nice combination, right hand to the body, left hook upstairs by Moikasa, and there's that stiff jab. It's almost a power shot. Oh, he is doubled up on that jab, just uh, in power. Brooks was born and raised in the Dominican Republic, where he started right. training in Taekwondo at the age of 14. Uh -oh. Hasn't fought since April of last year, and he's also an inspiring story. He weighed 340 pounds when he was 23. He felt the weight of that there. shot as he was backed up to the ropes, and he's being Two. administered an eight count. Three, four, five, six. The referee determined seven, that the ropes held eight, him up as okay. he was sent backwards five. with the thunderous left hand, and there's that left hook that rattles the jaw of Brooks once again, but a yeah. guy who weighed 340 pounds, and there he feels all of the weight of Zach Lacasa's power, and the Black Warrior records another devastating okay. knockout in the glory ring. Black Warrior makes short work of Carlos Shake and Bake Brooks. He was shaking and baking, but not in the uh, fashion he would have liked, Frank. No, he was not. He had a good game going, though. And you know what he did? He started dropping that right hand when he was throwing that jab. He started getting a little bit soft on it. And uh, Zach picked it right up, came right over the top of it a couple times. That was it. Makasa didn't give me an opportunity to, to finish telling Brooks' story. I would like to put a button on it by saying, you know, he weighed 340 pounds when he was 23. He started training at Tiger Schulman's, and he wants to inspire people to get in shape. Said he was the quintessential sofa spud. Well, there's the quintessential power stud in Zach Makasa. Let's take a look at what happened to Brooks. It was that left hook. That right hand got way too low. And, and Mukasa smelled it. Mukasa improves to three and one in glory. All three wins are brought to you by the letters K.O. So, Mikasa returns to winning form. And you have to wonder, the state of the light heavyweight division, of course, with Gokan Saki, the current champion, but his career in glory in flux. They're still trying to negotiate to get him back. Brooks, meanwhile, not the debut he was looking for. Big crowd on hand, have to be enjoying what they have seen thus far. Glory 22, 
You know, we the promotion prides itself on saying we stand up and strike, or stand up and fight, 100% striking, and the, the finishes we've seen thus far have been amazing. It gets better and better, my man. It gets better and better. Bodies be dropping. So McCassin now three and one. I'm sure he has designs on trying to avenge the loss to Salo Cavallari. Made a memorable debut with a thunderous left uppercut KO of UFC veteran Pat Barry. That was the event that also produced Raymond Daniels' dazzling kick of the century. The 360-degree two-hit spin kick knockout win over Francois Ambang. In its short history, the 22nd event, Think about the, the, the catalog of knockouts that Glory's oh, yeah. already produced. Made for the social media age, my friend. It's made for TV. This is the best TV sport I've ever seen. And Zach Mokasa now standing in solitude. What a life he has lived. 30 years of age and an accomplished family at that. From Congo, they escaped to South Africa. He's a computer engineer. His brothers are lawyers. His dad is a pharmacist. He's a walking reality show. The Pierre Morois Stadium in Lille, France has played host to a smorgasbord of fantastic finishes thus far at Glory 22. As we revisit the oh. power of Mikasa. And just perfectly placed left hooks right on the button, right on the temple. He found his spot and he went after it. Brooks just rattled, each one rattled. No recovery. Here in France, that left hook was the coup de glace for another impressive win. Ladies and gentlemen, we have an official time of 1 minute 58 seconds of that very first round. This one comes to an end by knockout. For your winner, Zach Murakasa. He remains a knockout machine. Impressive victory for Zach Mwikasa. The Black Warrior returns in fine form. Still to come here at Glory 22, the lightweight tournament final. And what a mouth-watering matchup this is. Thailand's Sitichai Sitsong Pinong, who made an auspicious Glory debut earlier tonight, knocking off former Glory lightweight champion David Kiria, takes on Josh Chauncey, undefeated at 4-0 with three knockout wins in his short Glory tenure. The victor will challenge for the Glory lightweight championship. And then in the main event, Rico Verhoeven defends the Glory heavyweight championship against Benjamin Adek Bui. Glory 22 continues. Scintillating action here in France. More to come your way August 7th when Glory 23 invades Las Vegas. The chips are down and the high rollers are in town for Glory 23 Las Vegas. Spectacular spins meet devastating hands as Raymond Daniels and Nikki Holskin square off in a battle for the vacant world title in the stacked welterweight division. The night sky of Nevada will be lit up in an all-or-nothing rematch. 
Glory 23, Friday, August 7th, live from the Hard Rock Hotel and Casino, Las Vegas.